The Desmond Ritter era is over with the Falcons shipping him off to the Arizona Cardinals in exchange for Rondell Moore. You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, to another illustrious episode of the Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. So if you don't know me, I'm your very humble host, Aaron Freeman. Been covering the Falcons for far too long at Falcfans.com. R.I.P. You also know me as Sirius Black, Mr. Drew, Mr. Jolly Green Giant, and Mr. A.K.A. And I appreciate each and every one of you guys that are everydayers of this illustrious podcast that make it your first watch, first listen of the day. And all you got to do to become an everydayer, subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. So I am joined, of course, by Jarvis Davis of Lock on Sports Atlanta. We have a jam-packed show. Falcons are out here illegally tampering when there's supposed to be a legal tampering period. Um, you know, they've kept a couple of free agents. We'll also get Jarvis takes on what pass rusher he's pining for. Uh, Cause I know he he's out there, you know um, you know, he's going to start picketing in front of flowery ranch. If they don't get a pass rusher in here soon, but we got to start today's episode talking about the trade, right? Like I was hitting up Jarvis this morning being like, Oh, we'll just do a quiet recap of the week. Nothing's probably going to happen. And then, like in the in the two hours before we started recording this episode, like a whole lot of stuff started happening, including the Falcons trading Desmond Ritter to the Arizona Cardinals in exchange for wide receiver Rondell Moore. So Jarvis, now that that trade is only maybe like thirty minutes old as we're talking about it, what's your sort of initial reaction to it? Uh, um, I figured this was going to happen because we got a chance to talk about you know Desmond Ritter and all the response with Kirk Cousins talking about just spilling the beans, man. Man, just said everything. I talked to Jesus. I talked to everybody. <laughs> you know, the head of Lex Trainer. You know, I talked to him on Monday while I was at at the crib. But 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 seriously though, I think my 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 natural instinct was that given how given the response to by the the veterans on this team and the and the guy specifically Kyle Pitts like you can tell that they were itching and and just waiting for a a veteran quarterback somebody who knows what the hell he's doing when he's under center that's all that this everybody in this locker room feels that they need and I think that there's not a shot at Desmond Ritter it's just hey he's a young quarterback and he has to develop, and he just wasn't going to develop quick enough for this team, specifically how they were built, you know, uh, how they've been built over these past few years. So I think it made sense for them to get to 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 uh, trade him to the Cardinals, and and for and then when you think about what they got in return for him, Rondell Moore, like. I think these wide receivers are going to look a little different this year um, because when you look at Darnell Mooney, Mooney, he's 5'11". Rondell Moore is 5'7". So we're talking about these little cockroach type guys, like guys, hey, get the ball in their hands and just let them go to work. Or like we know how good um, Kirk Cousins is is throwing the deep ball. It just gives you a really good picture as to what this offense could potentially look like going forward. And also, you bring back Cardinal Hodge as well. So I think when you add all those guys in that room, you're just like, okay, all right, we're going to be slinging this ball around the yard a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So we, we've been talking all offseason long, or yeah, sure. Let's let's say all offseason long here on Lockdown Falcons about, you know. Maybe you, during we, the regular season too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like we're saying like they're probably going to have six wide receivers on the roster. They have four now with Drake London, adding Darnell Mooney, adding Rondell Moore, adding Kadero Hodge or re-signing Kadero Hodge. So, Probably two more to go, probably in the draft. We'll see. Um, you know, Moore is an interesting player because he's kind of this gadget guy, right? Like when you look at him, whether it was at Purdue or whether it's in Arizona the last couple of years, it's just the idea of like get him the ball in his hands and let him go make plays with the ball, right? Which right. Is, is very Arthur Smith, right? You know, in terms of how he utilized certain guys these last right. couple of years. So it'll be interesting to see if the Falcons – can get more out of more than that but certainly i think in terms of if we're sitting here going okay drake's the one 
Um, Mooney's the two. Um, I think Moore's probably the four and Hodge is maybe the five. And then maybe you could slot in a rookie as the three and, you know, another rookie that you can sort of stash as the six or something like that. Um, that seems to make sense. So I, I think it makes sense. The Falcons trading Ritter, like I figured it was certainly a possibility. I figured it would probably happen like in training camp because you would bring Ritter and maybe a rookie to camp and have them compete. But it does seem like the Falcons are like, we'll just move on for Ritter. And maybe that means they keep Taylor Heineke, which anybody who's been listening to this podcast knows isn't my favorite decision if they wind up just doing that. But, it. you know, cut him. just yeah. say it. Just cut I mean, they cut are they going to cut him, though? Because if, if they were going to they got to cut him by Sunday if they're going to cut him. I mean, you could say what six million, six 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 million dollars. Yeah, I mean, are they just gonna are they gonna restructure it and then just basically get him to take a pay cut and then he's the backup this year and then they draft the quarterback and that's the three they carry. I look at it like this, man. I feel like this is a clean slate when it comes to this position because they clearly said we need to upgrade at this position. We need elite processors. So basically. All you guys that were uh, here last year, y'all aren't at least pro- elite processors, and I just kind of leave it at that. So I don't want to be mean on on on, on today. So, but I, I think that like this 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 offense has moved on. I feel like they have moved on from these guys. So I wouldn't be shocked if Taylor Heineke. We hear that hey, he's not on this roster, or he's going to be cut on um, pretty soon. Now, if he's willing to restructure and bring that number down, I mean. He is from here. You know, we're always figuring out the ties, you know, the, the local ties, right? So he is from the area. So he may want to stay, stay here and be a backup quarterback and collect the check and hold a clipboard. And hopefully he won't have to play. Hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. So, um, hey, man, Jarvis, we know what that looks like. Yeah. So we will talk a little bit more about the week so far, get Jarvis's thoughts on these free agent pickups, as well as his thoughts on uh, which players. He wants to see the Falcon continue to work at picking up, which, you know, basically Jarvis is we're going to give Jarvis the opportunity to talk why he wants this team to get a pass rusher and which pass rusher he wants to get to. Uh, And we'll also talk a little bit more about bringing Storm Norton and Kadero Hodge back uh, as we continue today's Locked on Falcons. Now, did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on a 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to the IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info, claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. So continuing today's Locked On Falcons, I want to let you know about the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel right here on YouTube. And if you're a baseball fan, make sure you mark your calendars next week for March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern for the best MLB season preview coming exclusively to Locked On Sports Today on March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Be the first to get the local ex- insight from the MLB local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network, including Locked On Braves. Find it on March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern on Locked On Sports Today, 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or for free on Amazon Fire TV channel's app. So, Jarvis, let's talk about the week so far for the Falcons. Uh, Busy day early in the process, and then things have kind of quieted it off, but then, you know, things, you know, heated back up. Got back to a simmer today, I guess you could say. Nothing major, but just like sort of low-key sort of depth moves, including uh, keeping Storm Norton and, and Cadero Hodge. We already touched a little bit on Cadero Hodge, but what were your thoughts seeing Storm Norton back in the fold? Uh, I thought it was an uh, excellent, you know, signing because when you think about a you know, backup tackle, a guy that can come in and spell the starter for a few games and not miss too much of a beat, right? Because uh, I think Storm did a, a pretty pretty solid job on um, filling in last year for Caleb McGarry. So when you have a, a guy like that, you need to keep those guys around. Because what happens most of the time, and we've seen it happen at that left guard spot, 
when when you had to put uh, or Jalen Mayfield in there and and we saw what that looks like and it was ugly. <laughs> so when you have a guy that can come in and say, you know, like, man, what is going on with such and such? Or what's going on with 77? You know, you keep calling this number out and it's like, man, this dude is not good. So for him to come in like he did, it, it makes all the sense in the world for, for the Falcons to bring him back because when you have that tackle, that is a that swing tackle spot, you know, that's the spot that you're gonna need because I mean, I know Jake Matthews has been Iron Man and he's been been slotted in that left tackle spot. You need somebody to come in and step in and be that guy if just in case he gets hurt. So I think and I wouldn't be too, you know, wouldn't be too out of the whack for Storm Norton to step in on that side and, and be that guy as well. So I, I'm not surprised at all that um they're bringing Storm Norton back because I think he did some solid things last year um, stepping in for Kevin Gary. I think so, too. I think so, too. It, to me, I want to see this team draft a tackle, but, you know, Same. we know with offensive linemen, they don't always hit the ground running as rookies. And as you sure. said, like, there's a pretty decent chance that, like, one of those guys is going to have to play if you're a backup uh, offensive lineman just because, you know, that – it's a hard position. Like still to this day, Jarvis offensive. I know you're a defensive lineman, so you, you only have a modicum of respect for offensive linemen, but no, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> let me tell you, let me, let me tell let me tell you why I used to be like that. I used to be, have so much disrespect for offensive linemen, but let me tell you when I find, when I respected them. So, you know, go back, watch a little bit by over 15 years ago. Right. Um, no the math, math, messing it up again. I 12, about 12 years ago. Okay. 2006, um, when I had just finished playing um, college ball, I went and played arena football. So back then, you had to be Iron Man, right? You had to play offensive and defensive line, right? Regardless of what your base position was. Oh my gosh! Oh, and you talking about somebody who hadn't played offensive line since high school? Oh man, the respect that I got for offensive linemen, like I don't care what level you're on or what level you played at. Or what level, how high you got to? If you got to the NFL and quote unquote was a bust or a bum, oh my God, I got so much respect for you because that is some hard stuff, man. Because think about it like, defense alignment are running full speed forward at you, and you have to essentially backpedal to block them. So, yeah, man, like, I respect the hell out of the offensive alignment right now. So, yeah, I used to be like that, but I'm a changed man, Aaron. So, yeah, I respect offensive alignment to the Mm, the great for sure. Okay. Okay. Well, I, w- I was just gonna say because like those are the guys that have to play like every snap, right? Like defense yeah. alignment, you you rotate. Like there's an eight man yeah. rotation or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, quarterbacks, like you're playing every snap, but half the snaps you're handing the ball off, so you don't really have to do anything. Offense right. alignment, every single snap you have to do sure. something, right? And basically, if you don't do your job, the, the entire play breaks down. So those guys still do not get enough respect, I think. And so um, I think all that to say, I think bring back Storm Norton makes a ton of sense. You know what he is. You don't know what a rookie may be, even if you do find one. So it makes sense to have that sort of known commodity, uh, you know, heading into training camp. But Jarvis, let's continue talking about the move so far. We've talked a little bit about Rondell Moore. Um, I know we talked earlier in the week about Kirk Cousins. Uh, but for the, the people that were not checking out Locked On Sports Atlanta, which, you know, again, what what are, you, what are you people doing out there if you're not listening each and every Monday on the football party with Jarvis, myself, Tanisha Batiste, and, and Tori McElhaney as we were reacting live to the Kirk Cousins move. But um, for the, the people that just, you know, are just a little behind in their, you know, being every day as a Locked On Sports Atlanta podcast, uh, or, you know, even though it's on the Locked On Falcons audio feed as well, but let the people know sort of what have your been your thoughts on the Falcons picking up Kirk Cousins, if you have any thoughts on Charlie Warner, as well as Darnell Moody. You know, to be honest with you, man, like we start with Kirk, Kirk Cousins, because I think that if you just listen to the verbiage that that Raheem Morris was using when he was got hired, that that Terry Fontenot used when he finally came out of hiding after Arthur Smith got fired, I, I think that you you understand that the priority was to get the quarterback regardless of the cost, right? I mean, I know people get, I, I was scared off by the number and I've, I've, I've been raising my hand. Like, I don't know about this one because like, just from, I, cause I have health concerns, right? You know, I, I'll say this and I'll continue to say it. When you hurt your, when you pop that Achilles on one foot, 
you best believe more than likely that other one might be coming around if you don't rehab it correctly. Now, granted, NFL trainers, you would think that that wouldn't be the case, but that is something that can happen. The risk goes up once you pop one, and more than likely, if you don't do it, handle that uh, rehab correctly, you can pop the other one. But I, but that aside, though, the stats are – the proof is in the numbers, right? Like, the dude puts up numbers, and, and what this offense has needed is an average quarterback. And they probably would have won at least – Three more games last year, if they would have been able to do that. You're talking about 10 and 7 versus 7 and 10. So when you have those things right coming into play, like it just makes sense, right? This is and the Falcons want some stability at the spot because we haven't had it since Matt Ryan went out that door. And we know how he how he went out that door. And I don't think any that doesn't sit right with anybody who who respects what Matt Ryan brought to this organization. So I think like that made all the sense in the world for me um by them bringing it in i just had a few concerns as far as from a medical standpoint as far as donnell mooney goes it makes sense like you need bodies <laughs> i think tori mentioned that on on, on the atlanta football party on monday she's she said said hey they need bodies they need wide receivers because they just didn't have any you know now you're looking at rondell moore donnell mooney drake london Cardell Hodge, who's a guy who can be a special teams and give you a little bit of something on the offensive side, offensive side as well. So, you know, now you leave room for and not have to depend on a rookie wide receiver. Hey, we're going to draft this guy in the first round and we need him to be wide receiver two in year one uh, next to uh, Drake London. Nah, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. So I like the way Terry Fonda is doing it. And I think it's setting up, Aaron. Is setting itself up because we know what they did at free agency last year, right? They spent all the money on on on, on defense last year, kind of focused on the offense early on in, in the draft. So since they focusing on the offensive side of football and free agency, dare I say, we might see some defensive player in the first round for the first time in Terry Fontenot's machine. Man, you see how my voice getting? Like I'm getting excited, man. I just, I just know Jarvis, you're setting yourself up for some disappointment <laughs> by, by doing that. I just, I just know. All I'm, I'm just okay. Don't okay. hurt yourself. Don't okay. hurt yourself. You know. Since, since, since we're going there, since we're going there, I know we ain't playing this, but like since we're going there, Falcons profit. Okay. Who you got in the first round at eight with the eighth overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft? The Atlanta Falcons select. I don't know. That's the thing, Jarvis. I don't know because I'm like, it just depends on the day, right? It's like, okay, <laughs> this feels like a Dallas Turner day or this feels like a Jared Verse day or this feels like a Roma Dunze day. You know, it's just like every day it just feels different, you know? And it's just like, I, like, I don't know. I honestly do not know. Like, okay. I think you're right, though. Like, it does seem to be pointing in that direction. Right. That take the pass rusher um, at eight, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh man, I mean, I know when. We, oh, let me ask you. And I ask you another question. Since I'm putting you on the couch. So I know when Terry Funno first got here, and I was kind of, you know, jumping on the back. I was running behind. I was running behind the bandwagon. I was like, all right, man, you know, I kind of like Terry. What's going on? And you were kind of a little skeptical. Uh huh. That's fair. I'm just making up a word. Uh, you were a little skeptical as far as Terry Fondo, um early on in his regime where are you now i'm fine with terry I, I'm, I'm good with terry terry's fine like you know like i'm not gonna sit here and be like terry's the greatest general manager in the history of the world you get no i mean like there, can we can we win a, have a, a winning season before we we you know like that's what i'm just like you know i just i just need to have a winning season before i can yeah. be like you're doing yeah. a great job like you're doing a good job but yes. we just need to win some games. That's all. That's all I'm asking. Like that's the bare minimum. We just need to start winning some games. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good on Terry. Like I, I give him like a solid B so far. That's fair. That's fair. Maybe a B minus. Yeah. You know, depending on my mood. Right. I give B minus because of B. John Robinson. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I never let it down. Okay. It's all good. I respect it. Yeah. I respect it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jarvis. Uh, we'll see what else is Terry is cooking, and I'm sure because I know he's an everydayer. 
of this podcast. So what you will we will give you the floor to what? make your best pitch for Terry and what pass rusher beyond the draft. Uh, you know, we got some weeks before the draft. What pass rusher you would like to see the the team bring in, and then I guess we'll we'll knock Terry a little bit because you know what's going on with this tamper and stuff. So we'll we'll get into that as we wrap up today's Locked On Falcons. So say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel is going to let you bet on every game of the tournament, whether you're betting on the big upset, the one seed. We know you love to bet on those 12 seeds against those five seeds, right? It's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it on. Just throw on that $5 on whatever you want. As long as it wins. So head on over to fanduel.com slash locked on. You can bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. And also fanduel.com slash locked on is the place to go if you're looking for NFL draft props. If you're feeling a certain type of way like Jarvis is today and feeling like, hey, we're gonna get a defensive end or an outside linebacker, or uh maybe you're like, you know, just because Jarvis actually said it, that means now they're actually gonna take a wide receiver. You can uh, go over to fanduel.com and make that bet as well. Fanduel.com slash locked on. Uh, for all of, of your winning bets. So Jarvis, before we get into the tampering stuff, I'm going to give you the floor to make your pitch. You know, the the all we saw all these pass rushers get signed. We've heard some rumors that the Falcons were interested in signing, uh, you know, a couple of those guys and didn't quite work out. It seems like this is the story of the Falcons, whether it's, you know, Robert Quinn or Marcus Davenport, maybe Daniel Hunter this year, all this stuff where it seems like the Falcons always seem to be in on a, a pass rusher, but they never choose Atlanta. But Jarvis, if you had your pick of the pass rusher that you can choose, now you can choose, mm-hmm. who would you want this team to bring in, uh, you know, between now and the draft? Wow, man. Oh, so there are a couple, there are a few guys that I have my eye on. Emmanuel Agba comes to mind. Uh, Carl Lawson comes to mind. I know he's, he had some um, injury issues, and um, but when he's been on the field, he's been pretty pretty productive as far as rushing the passer. But the guy that the pie in the sky guy, man, that I would like to see Eric Armstead, man. I just feel like this dude is he brings something to the table. I think he'll bring that that Calais Campbell element, right? Like. You can play him at end and you can play him, you know, at def- at the defensive tackle spot, you know, and on pass rush downs. I just love long uh <laughs> defense. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> I was gonna let it slide, but you caught yourself. Like, okay, let's meet, let's meet. I like the comments are going crazy right now. <laughs> I, know, right? Like, I can see them in my mind right now. I'm like, what is wrong with this dude? People start questioning everything. Uh-huh, I would uh-huh. uh, finish that sentence, but but yeah, but seriously though, I think he's the type of guy that that will bring something different. Like that'd be a, like a John Abraham type effect. I feel that they were to bring a guy like that in, and I wouldn't mind them. Hey, you can go and get a cornerback at eight if you bring in a guy like Eric Armstead in. So, you know, and, and maybe draft a mid round guy uh, as far as the edge rusher goes. So, for me, I think that would make the most sense. Um, like you said, Carl Lawson, yeah, uh, that'd be cool. And Emmanuel Agba, yeah, that'd, that'd be cool too. You know, he's fairly young, you know. So, um, but if they were to say, hey, we are signing Eric Armstead, six seven, about two ninety, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 let's, let's start rocking. Like we talk, we about to rock, start rocking and rolling. Then and I, and people don't have to worry about you know, hey, them trying to bring convince KLA is coming, but come back. So yeah, there we go. Okay, well, Terry, you heard the man, so make this man happy. Um, you know, you're not making other people happy because the Falcons are being investigated for tampering during the legal tampering period and people are like wait how can you tamper when it's legal but apparently the rules are and again i I only learned this within the last 24 hours the rules are that you can talk to a player's agent but you can't talk to the player itself and basically kirk cousins seemingly let it slip in his introductory press conference that he was contacting trainers and pr people in the falcons organization on tuesday before he was supposed to wait until Wednesday 
And so now, of course, the NFL has to investigate because, you know, them's the rules, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, like we can sit here and say this is a stupid rule, which it is. Like most of the rules in the NFL are stupid, yeah, right? You know, yeah. if you have the wrong color green on your socks, you get fined, you know, $50,000. It doesn't make any sense. But yeah. it's, uh, you know, the, basically the, the key to getting away with a crime, like everybody else gets away with this crime, is to not go on television and admit it. You know, that's basically... Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. thing you gotta do so yeah, we'll see man. what we'll see what happens with the falcons but i i know the last time a team or one of the times i don't know if it was the last time but one of the times a team got busted for tampering was the chiefs back in 2016 and they stripped a third and sixth round pick for them for the previous year where they went for jeremy macklin so i guess it took a, the nfl a year to investigate but it you know again because kirk is <laughs> snitching on us <laughs> right <laughs> I, I don't know who's gonna take yeah. that year like, but uh Jarvis, Kirk, what, oh, we about to take your, your nickname away now. You can't be called Kirk O'Chains Chains because you out here dry snitching. Man, you ever heard of young Jeezy? Stop dry snitching. So man. Jarvis, when you when you when you saw this, you were like, what were your thoughts when you saw this? And like this is just classic Falcons, or what, oh, what, what were you thinking? Come on, man. Like, this is so falcony, right? Like, this is a falcony type of thing when you you finally get some stability you finally get the quarterback that you need you got the guy that you wanted that you prioritize in off season the pro the elite processor you're working under a consistent urgency you know like all those terms that were thrown out and all that stuff but now we throw in the, the term that y'all been trying to dodge and get rid of yes this is very falcony yes very much so and i think that Mike Florio might be a little extra because he's trying to say that Kyle Pitts violated. I was like, dude, he's a player. He can talk to whoever the heck he wants to. You know, he's like, he was acting on the organization. We don't know that. Right. Yes, we do. I'll answer that for you. No. Kyle's like, man, I'm tired of this Desmond Ritter dude. Like, I need some targets. You want this number, bro? Like, man, get put $500 on my little organization, man. Give me $500, man. I just need to put some gas in my car. Like, you can have this number. Yeah, you know, Kyle's I was like, th just throw me the ball and you can right. have the number. You know? the rock, bro. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just yeah, keep me in mind, bro, when you drop back the pass. Like, that's all I need. You know, you can have this dog on number. I go get 84, the more like a quarter of Patterson ain't coming back. So, yeah, but, but yeah, man, this is, I, I, I guess now, um, now that I've kind of like thought about it, I was like, all right, as right, long as they don't ding them this year in the draft, I guess it don't, it's not going to matter. I don't know. I mean, it's just, Man. And then the way, <laughs> oh, oh man, it's you know what hope is John Robinson thing last year, uh, with um last year or year before that? No, I'm sorry, yeah, last year, yeah, when um he was sick and and yeah, the line, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Arthur Smith was like, oh yeah, we can do this, all right, all right, this is ridiculous. And then next thing you know, they get fined and like, yeah, y'all didn't do what y'all was supposed to do, so. Yeah, man. Can we stop this, please? Like the whole the whole crowd pump, pumping the crowd noise. Yeah, I remember like, that one. <laughs> God, man. And, and we ain't got that. If we had, if the city of Atlanta had a Super Bowl, I would give two flying flips on a rolling freaking donut. If they were out here tampering, pumping crowd noise in, but this city ain't got no damn Super Bowl, man. Like, like if you gonna if you gonna push the rules or uh, break the rules, at least win. Like be like Bell Belichick. You know what I'm saying? If you gonna cheat, at least get the Super Bowls to back it up. Well, as they say, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. So yeah, the Falcons man. are trying real hard. They're trying, they're they're trying, trying real hard. <laughs> <laughs> Being real Falcon, you know, can't, yeah. can't get right. So can't get right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's another one too. Can't yeah. Get right. So there you guys have it. We'll be back with more next week. On Lockdown Falcons, of course, Lockdown Sports Atlanta football party on Monday as well. So you can get your double dose of Falcons content come Monday. But uh, guys, that's going to do it for us here on behalf of Jarvis Davis. Uh, you know, hope you guys have a great weekend and uh, we'll see what else the Falcons do. And hopefully you know, they will be able to get right uh, moving forward. But uh, so far, so good. I guess <laughs> they, they look. Eric Armstead get um um get signed on Saturday by the Falcons. Day. all is well. Yeah, all is well. All is yeah. well. All is well. All is well. And until draft night when they take that wide receiver and, and Jar you see Jarvis. Right, have yep, I'm going live right after the death. <laughs> right after the death. <laughs> I, I, I just need. I need, to see I, I need to see it happen. So I just I just want to see a person completely lose it and melt down on live television. 
live internet, all that stuff. So I'm I'm rooting for it. So I am absolutely Jarvis pushing the wide receiver at eight I for the next are. five plus weeks. <laughs> just just to see you melt down. That's it. Yes, you know, we, we gotta get the views. We gotta give the people what they want. Yeah, man. It's coming. I see it. I feel it already in my spirit. 